some of the stuff that the Lord shared with me that is about to take place and what we can do to prepare for it. A lot of this type of stuff, last time I started talking about this stuff, they banned me. So I have to be very watchful when we're talking about this. But going back to what I, was, what I was saying, I got a little bit into the nine choirs and the angelic hierarchy. The reason why the angelic hierarchy is very important, and we had to learn this as kids, as baby prophets, we had to learn the angelic hierarchy, which represents the nine, the nine choirs, as they would say, or the nine, the nine, uh, the nine choirs that existed, which are which are known to be the exalted celestial, the exalted celestial realm. And it's very important that we understand the hierarchy. In the first, there are three different chambers, and we know that these three chambers, and understanding the temple uh, that Moses uh, begins to be consecrated to build. We know that in the outer court, it is archi, archangels, and angels. We know that in the inner court, there is what is known as dominions, uh, mights, and powers. And then we know in the holies of holies, there are seraphim, cherubims, and thrones. And it's interesting because when I teach this type of stuff, the nine choirs represent the nine higher non-physical dimensions. So we are able to see each of the nine non-physical dimensions or the nine, the nine dimensions that go above the physical dimension through understanding the angelic hierarchy that begins to exist. And so this is why we understand that, and this is going, I'm going to be talking about this in my Patreon in my next teaching, where I'll be getting into understanding the mind and how the mind only can connect with 11 dimensions, but it is until the Christ mind becomes awakened that we have access to all 12 dimensions. When we understand the 12 dimensions, this is why in quantum mechanics or in quantum physics, they will say that there, after the 11th dimension, it begins to become non-physical. When we get into, for example, D2 or dimension 2, we understand that in dimension 2 is where the emotional mind operates out of the emotional body. So D2 is known as to be the place of where the emotional part or the emotional body or where we begin to see the emotional aspect or the emotional mind operating out of. And this a lot of times is known as the unconscious or the subconscious. This is in dimension two. When we talk about dimension three, which represents the physical reality or the physical realm, and I'm just giving you a little bit of it, and I'm not going to go too deep. I'm going to go back into other things. But when we talk about dimension three, in dimension three, this is where the ego begins to operate out of. Now, when we talk about, for example, the animal kingdom, they are operating out of D2. They do not possess an ego. So they are operating out of D2 or dimension two. When we talk about the elemental kingdom or the mineral kingdom, they are operating out of D1. The physical body is operated out of D1. It represents the aspect of the elemental or the mineral kingdom. This is why we look at the human body, and the human body is basically the conglomeration of all 102 minerals that begins to create or bring the human body into the sphere. You look at the 1, 2, you still come back to the 12. And the basis of the mineral body or the human body coming into form, the basis of this is seen through the 12 salt minerals. And each of these salt minerals story is told through the 12 tribes of Israel. Can you take a little more? Can you take a little more? So I'm going to get into that because I'm going to start talking a little bit about this and getting into the junk DNA aspect. And... The junk DNA is a reflection of the fall of Adam. The fall of Adam when humanity or the soul became entrapped in carbon. And as it began to fall, there is reference of this fall that is even seen in the holy form of the human body. So when we get into this and as we begin to understand this, this is known as junk DNA. And junk DNA points to the aspect that at one point DNA strand was not uh, was not uh, a dual type of ladder, but DNA strand was a 12-stranded type of DNA. And this is why you will see God materializing or showing his body through the 12 tribes of Israel or when the body of the Christ materialized through the 12 or what is known 
as the 12 disciples of Jesus. You will see the 12. You will also see the 12 when you look at the chromatic, set, a chromatic scale, which anyone who understands music, there are 12 notes in the chromatic cell that are giving you the 12 frequency patterns that all creation was used when it was forming or coming into creation. That when the word proliferated, there were 12 different sounds that begun to go out, and each of them represent the formation of what came into formation. And so there is 12 frequency or 12 notes before you're able to see another octave. When we talk about this, we know that there are 12 salt tissues. And I teach this in some of my deeper courses. And most of these courses, I don't, I, you know, some of these teachings are just so deep. I don't, I, I, I'm very, just a select group, do, am I able to impart this type of knowledge? But this is the type of stuff that was taught to us. So we understand that the 12 salt minerals, and this is why you would hear the Bible says that we are what? The salt of the earth, referring to the 12 salt minerals that are in the body. And the 12 salt minerals, Frankie, is potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, potassium chloride, calcium chloride, magnesium phosphate, potassium sulfate, uh, sodium phosphate, calcium sulfate, silica, calcium phosphate. It, 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 goes, it, uh, it goes down sodium chloride, iron phosphate. And each of these 12 salt minerals are reflected in the story of the 12 tribes. This is why I'm saying this to you, that we must understand that the Bible, and we have to get out of this notion of literalizing the word, the letter killeth. That's when people literalize it, the letter killeth, but it is the spirit that gives the word life. This is referring to the holy form. It is encoded or cryptonized or in cryptology or encoded through symbology, Frank, when we look at the Old Testament, but later on it is revealed in the New Testament. And so it is concealed in the Old Testament, and it is revealed in the New Testament. In the Old Testament, we are looking at temples and everything that are being externalized, only to learn in the New Testament that that was the practice of teaching us how to internalize. Have you not offered up your body as a living sacrifice? It, it becomes the new temple of the Holy Spirit. And so everything that is seen in the temple, and I'm going to do a deep teaching where I get into the tabernacle so that we understand it, but everything that you begin to see in the temple is only a reflection of everything that is in the human body. We talk about the brazen altar. The brazen altar is only a reflection of different things in the human body. We talk about the fire or the holy fire. It is only a reflection of everything that is in the human body. And so you will begin to see that Jesus makes reflection of this. For example, when he says, I am the way, I am the doorway, he is referring to that he is the doorway. What is the doorway of the human body? The doorway of the human body is always looked at as the mind. Now, Let's go a little bit further here, because as the Christ mind is born, as the Christ mind is born, and I'm going to go, I'm going to touch a little bit about it, uh, on this, but in a couple of weeks, I'm going to be putting something up, if it's not up already, about talking about the DNA process and awakening the higher strands of DNA in the body. This is something that um, is usually done, and the age that this can be done is that it has to and it only can take place when someone reaches the age of 33 or older. This is why in Jewish mysticism it was understood that it was not forbidden or it was not allowed to be taught this type of stuff unless if someone has reached the age of 33 because there are certain strands that stay dormant that can only be awakened. This is very important because now we are now getting into awakening the higher strands and also awakening these higher strands of DNA in the physical body through the filling of the Holy Spirit. The blood is first seen in the reference of the Ruach or the breath of God. As the breath personified in the physical body, it was understood that it began to personify through blood or DNA. As man fell in the garden, we understand that it disperses the 12 different strands that are on the helix. And this is seen even to this day of junk DNA. And this is the way how many scientists and many people that study 
epigenetics and some of the other different things about coding of DNA, they understand that it is through DNA, which is the first way of how information was stored. That information was stored through DNA, and it is passed down through generations through DNA. And this is why the blood of Jesus becomes so, infam- so infamous. It becomes so important. It is not important in the sense of the way how dogmatic Christians use it, almost as if that they use the blood of Jesus in a way to cover to cover things or to protect things. They will declare the blood of Jesus. But the blood of Jesus was important because the blood was not to uh, protect things, but it was more so to reveal or to give the information to humanity in code to awaken his own divine nature that is within every one of us. The blood of Jesus was not used to protect us from Lucifer or from Satan like in dogmatic Christians teach it. It was used to awaken, and when it mixes with our DNA, it was used to awaken our dormant DNA so that we are able to be awakened in Christ. And he that is in Christ becomes a new creature within God. The whole notion of becoming a new creature representing that there is a side of dormant DNA that is awakened. The blood of Jesus was not to protect you from Lucifer. The blood of Jesus was never used against Satan. When people say in dogmatic Christianity, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you, there is no reference of biblical text that represents that. The blood was always used to protect us from God, not to repel us from Lucifer. The blood of Jesus has nothing to do with the devil. It has to do with protecting us so that we can be blameless before God. It did not protect us from Lucifer. It protected us from God. And so this is why when we look at Passover, the blood on the door with the death angel, this was not the devil going around, but it represented an angel that was sent by God to protect the people from God that did not have the blameless lamb on their door. Oh, now. So the blood becomes important because it is the blood of Jesus that carries the information. Remember, blood was released or it was given to, it was given during the fall of humanity because if you remember before Adam begins to fall, he is not in a state, he has a body, but the body is not carnal. It is when the body becomes carnivorous or carnal. When we look at the word to be carnal, we see the word carnivorous or to be a carnivore. It is during the fall of humanity that we also are able to notate when the human species became meat eaters. Oh, Frank, I better slow down here. 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 Became carnal, became carnivorous, meaning to be fleshly, to be eating of the flesh. The eating of the flesh first came through eating of fleshly thought or having fleshly desire, Frankie. Oh, shatakoroboshi kishata. And so we must understand that the original body of the first Adam before he fell was a body that was made out of the light or being a light being. Now, I want you to understand this because I was teaching this one time and there was a dogmatic that was hearing this. They were pulled to it, but they were choking. They said, probably, but the Bible says he made the body from the dust of the earth. And I looked back at them and I said, yes, the body is made. The angels have bodies as well. Angels do possess a body as well. Not only do they possess a body, but the Bible is very clear about how some of the celestial angels' bodies begin to uh, look or how it appears. The only difference is that their body is not carnal. The body is not carnal. The first Adam begins to make the holy form become a carnal form, while the second Adam spiritualizes back the form back into its higher nature as the resurrected body, but also individualized it into what would be known as the resurrected body. 